what's up guys back with a new video I'm doing like five videos right now at the same time I'm starting to get washed out um, but it's the 4th of July right now I was taking the front apart to put the bags in which is gonna be this is gonna be uploaded after that so you guys don't know what's going on until the bag episode is up but um, took my calipers apart and everything I've always noticed like the front calipers were like goofy because I didn't oh, no, it has a new master cylinder on it. it just seems like it's not getting good fluid to the brakes but took the brake calipers apart and I don't know if you can see that because I can't focus but the inside of the piston is pretty much all rusted and shot this is the little ring that goes on the end of the piston pretty much just fell off the fucking piston so I've decided I was gonna upgrade the calipers but the price for the calipers for these is like I don't know like 60 bucks each and for me to be doing that and getting calipers and then just putting them on, I decided just to spend like an extra $150 or so. I just decided to do the RX-7 big brake kit. Um, it's a budget brake, big brake kit. I know you guys want to, well, why are you putting a big brake kit on a car that has a stock motor? Well, like I said, I do plan on, um, I do plan on boosting it at least in the future or ITBs or some other power mods, just not right now. But um, I figured while I'm down here, I might as well just go ahead and get the RX-7 calipers. I already got the brackets ordered, which I'll show you guys later. Um, the calipers are ordered. I got to wait for those to come in in the mail. Um, I got them for a good price and the pads. I think for one caliper and one pad, or the set of pads I paid, um, let's see, it was about 50 bucks after my cores returned for the caliper and the pads. And then the other caliper is going to be like, um, I think like $40. So, I'll give you guys prices for everything that I paid at the end, but I'm just going to be running some Wagner Thermo Quiet Pads for the front. Not anything too aggressive, like I said, because I'm not going to take in the car tracking or anything. But uh, this side, I haven't checked this side, but I'm pretty sure it's just as bad. Because I noticed when I painted these like years ago, which is the color they are now, um, oh, it's not as bad, but they're definitely getting old and rusted on the inside, so... I just decided to do the upgrade. So, like I said, I'm getting all the parts from Garagistic. I already got the brackets. They got them. I got them on sale. They're like ten dollars off. So I got those on sale. Um, I have to order the rotors, and then um, I think that's pretty much it. Because all you need for this install is the calipers, brake pads, um, the modified rotors, which are VW Corrado rotors, the interior bore on the on the part down there. Just the interior bore uh, is bored out a little bit more to fit the E30, so it fits over this. And then um, that's all you need, pretty much. Oh, uh, you will also if you don't have, uh, if you just have like stock brake lines like I do, you are going to need to uh, use an adapter. You have to make an adapter with two different ends on it: one to fit the uh, the stock brake lines, and then one to fit the uh, the one that goes into the RX-7 caliper itself which I'll show you guys after I get that done but, but like I said I'm just waiting for parts pretty much and then uh, once I get my parts in I start doing the install. By the time the parts come in I should have the front bags and everything all assembled and whatnot with the airlines. This is pretty much like the cheapest big brake kit that you can get because these pistons are four or these calipers are four piston calipers of course the E31s are stock one piston so definitely going to give you some more braking power. There are some other things that you can do to upgrade um, the efficiency of the system that you're going to be putting on if you're doing this upgrade. You just have to, um, you can get like a bigger master cylinder and uh, you know more, more aggressive pads of course. But uh, once the calipers get in, I'm probably just going to paint them because they need to be painted. And then um, I'll probably paint the rear ones to match because I'm not really sure what color I want to do. I'll probably just do like a neutral color for now. Then hopefully we can uh, do some tests after the car is back on the road and uh, tell you guys what I think about the upgrade in general. All right, so here's the brackets, nothing special. A lot of different companies sell these, but Garagistic was the cheapest and I just like buying their products. So, just get a little closer look at them. Of course, these are the original E30 uh, bolt mounting points and then these are the ones for the RX-7. So, pretty much you're just gonna bolt them up like this and then um, you're probably gonna have to cut out some of your uh, your dust shield back there because it's just going to be in the way of your caliper but um that's pretty much it for the brackets i think they usually go for 65 bucks and then you got to pay shipping so but it comes with those and then all the hardware needed for it so you guys get new hardware for that 
and uh, just waiting on the calipers to get here. We're supposed to come in the mail. Um, once the calipers come here, I'll paint those real quick and then try to get the, the rest of the front together. And then I just have to wait for the rotors to come in. Um, I ordered those from Garagistic also. So I just have to, they already come pre modded everything, and then they have a drill hole where you put your little set screw in for your rotor, which I do not have. But only other thing I was worried about was this. Um, of course, this caliper is going to set out more than the E31 is because it's obviously bigger. Um, but I also heard it sits like one or two millimeters back farther towards the inside of the car, like on the hub. So for my rear spacer, I might have to go ahead and get the like the inner the inner chamfer or whatever might have to get that machined out so it sits against the uh, the thing just fine otherwise I don't think it's gonna sit flat but I guess we'll see when we get there so got the uh, conversion rotors from Garagistic um, probably just gonna go ahead and do those or put those on right now so I can get part of the front together um, so I got these rotors the only thing different between the E3 ones of course that they're bigger but they also have these vents and then um, they got your little hole right here that they drilled for uh, your little set screw. And then this part right here, like I said, has been bored out, so it's a little bit bigger. Um, so that's that. Those came in the other day. I just got some Wagner Thermal Quiets ceramic pads. Like I said, I'm not going too aggressive right now. I'm just going to go ahead and just get some pads to drive around in the summertime. Then when I do power upgrades or whatever, I'll upgrade maybe to a different master cylinder. And then, uh, you know, some more aggressive pads. But also got the caliper paint. I just got some high heat fucking stuff. It's for like a grill or whatever. But all it is is silver, but it has metallic flake in it. So I'll show you guys that when I'm painting it. But that'll look pretty cool. It pretty much just look like the stock silver. It just, it'll just be a little bit metallic flake. So it'll stand out a little bit if you look in there and see it behind the wheels. But I got to redo the back. Um, the back calipers are also in the same paint color, so I have to take those apart, um, and then just go ahead and fucking spray them while they're on the car, because I'm not going to take them off the line. Just tape some shit off, but here's the caliper, it's fucking, it's huge compared to the E31. Like I said, of course, these are the four piston. Um, I ordered these for a 89 Mazda RX-7 with a turbo. You just gotta make sure you don't get the uh, the smaller one. So make sure you get the one from like the turbo to make sure that you get the uh, the bigger one because they did come with a smaller one. But I can put this down here for size comparison. Got the RX-7 one right there, and then the tiny E31 single piston. So it's definitely huge compared to uh, that size. Now another thing I want to talk about is the line. They say if you have stock lines, you have to run an adapter to fit into that, to fit into this one. But um, if I don't have to do that, in fact, I'll just go ahead and uh, use that one because these are remade um, different. Because I know if you get their stainless steel ones from Gear Logistics, then they just bolt right up and they screw it right into the caliper. So I'm not really sure if that's going to work for mine or if I'm going to have to do the adapter, like I said. But if I do, I'll just have to do it and I'll show you guys what pieces I use for the adapter. So I'm just going to go ahead and take these calipers, well the caliper that I have now, get it painted, tape off all the shit, get it painted. Um, I also want to put the brackets on today, so I'm going to get the brackets all put on. I'm going to have to cut back the dust shield and everything because um, the caliper is in the way of the dust shield. So the, pretty much like this part right here is going to get cut off. I think it's like back to here where this dust shield is. So I have to be careful with the grinder when I'm cutting that off. Because I'm pretty sure the dust shield is behind. The uh, only way you can get the dust shields off is if you take off the fucking wheel bearing and I ain't doing all that shit. So, go ahead and get these calipers painted. And then in a couple of days, I, or when I get the other one on Tuesday, and then I get it painted and everything. So probably like towards the end of the week, I'll put the front of it together. And like I said, I won't be able to do any kind of testing or anything until the bags are done. Obviously, because I can't drive it, so just gonna go ahead and get those painted today. Cut that shit off, put the brackets on, get those all mocked up, put those on there, probably put the rotors on. And then um, that should be pretty much it until I get my other caliper and paint it and put it on. And then uh, we'll go from there, so. Alright, guys, I'm out here working on the car. Just wanna show you guys, just for reference, um, 
I did the bottom part of this with my grinder, but the grinder's too big to get the top part. So, let's see if I can focus here. You can see kind of my line. Gotta cut all that out, so I'm just gonna use the, the little air die grinder or whatever. And this part, I just grind it back to there, so it's not in the way of the, uh, the bracket at all. Got a little bit of the ball joint, but who gives a fuck. Anyways, the other side, I'm working on. Also did the bottom, but I also wanted to show you guys that, um, of course I gotta do my part there, so I just gotta get my little die grinder and try to cut that part out. Just to not mess with the, the bag or anything up there. But I'm gonna cut that. I already cut this, like I said. Right here, if you can see, if my camera wax will focus. This part right here is in the way of the bracket, so this whole part right here is gonna have to come off. Because when you put the bracket on, which I can't really show you too often, cloud is put on the front for now. That's where it goes, anyways. But um, when you put this on here, that little piece of metal that's right behind this pretty much is in the way and causes it to kind of like weevil. So I'm just gonna get my little die grinder and chop that right off. And then I'll chop this off. And then uh, they do have arrows on them, if you can see. So that goes towards the front of the car. And um, you'll just bolt the back bolts through the, uh, the back. And then when you get the caliper on, the caliper obviously bolts to those points. So that's pretty much it. Another thing I wanted to talk about was if you're, you probably are going to have to run spacers depending on what wheels you have or whatever, but uh, everything is going to be sitting one millimeter back uh, towards the car. So this little ring sometimes, like if you have uh, spacers, you might have to get your spacers milled out. All right, these are my spacers from um, 42 Draft Designs. As you can see, they got the little taper. So some spacers, if depending on which ones you buy, it's just going to be flat right here, and it's just going to go around the hub bore or whatever. But sometimes you might have to get this little lip right here milled. Otherwise, it won't sit flat. But uh, it seems to sit flat on mine. Like I said, these are 4-2 uh, draft designs, uh, 25 mil spacers. Those are for the front, obviously, because that's where I'm doing the brakes. But anyways, I just got to cut those two things. Then uh, let me see if I can try to get some set screws for my uh, rotors, because mine's never had really any. Then um, right now I'm painting the caliper. With, as you can see, I got the caliper right here. It's um, I just did a uh, it's getting clear coated right now, but you really can't see it because it's not in the sun. But as you can see, it's silver, but it's actually metallic silver, like the can showed. So looks pretty cool. You don't really see the metallic flake too much, but uh, definitely bringing the clear coat on it definitely brought out some of the uh, the flake on it. Can't really see unless it's in the sun. Got all the cylinders and everything covered up with cardboard, then taped. I uh, got the bleeder screw taped, and then just uh, put a piece of tape over that, even though it's a cap, anyways, where the brake line goes. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get that painted tonight. And then uh, after I get off work tomorrow, depending on what time it is or how the weather is, I'll go ahead and uh, clear coat that one. And then that one should be done over there, so I should be able to assemble one side, but I still do have to get the adapter, like I said. Um, because one is a bubble flare for the BMW, I think, and then uh, the RX-7, I think, is the inverted flare, or vice versa. But pretty much, like I said, if you bought the stainless steel um, brake hoses from Garagistic, you don't have to worry about doing anything. But if you have stock ones, then you're going to have to run that little adapter. So you just get uh, the little adapter, and then you put it on there. But I'll show you guys what that looks like if I have to do it. If not... I'll still show you guys like a picture or whatever of what it looks like, just in case you need to do it yourself. But go ahead and let that dry, like I said, and then uh, the front should be getting close to being done. I won't be able to drive the car for a while, obviously, because I haven't even. I mean, I got the front bags assembled and everything with the airlines ran, and then um, the back. I have to do some work back here, but. Got a bunch of stuff, so this video is going to be after the bag video, so be sure to check that out if you guys haven't. But uh, let's get these things painted and uh, get some better stopping power because my calipers have been shot for years and it just felt like I didn't have any stopping power whatsoever. So it's getting late for tonight, um, and I'm tired, but anyways, if you could see back here, 
I thought my spaces were good without having to hit anything, but after I pushed the rotor back and everything, it does still hit on the inside of the spacer, so that little uh, chamfer or whatever you call it that I showed you, I'm gonna have to get that milled down like another, um, not an inch, another like a millimeter or two on that, and probably the inside ring. No, I guess not, because it's not really close to that. Um, but I definitely have to get machine chop to get that down a little bit. And then I think also, I know on this side because I can only turn the rotor like halfway, but pretty much right back here where that little bolt is on the top back here, I think I'm hitting that so I might have to come over farther and cut that part out too. Because I think the back of the rotor is hitting that. So. Alright guys, so this is just what the calipers look like once they're all uh, put together. I just wanted to show you guys what they look like before I showed you how to do it. You got your pin, then you got two clips. Then your third clip goes on the back between the two pins, and then your brake pads just sit in there. So I just wanted to give you guys a little look at the caliper before I show you how to do it. All right, so first off, you're going to put your pads in. I got my little uh, pad shims that go on the back. If you don't have the, the little brackets that go behind the pads, I just bought the uh, pad shims. So that's what I was just doing. I was just putting those on the back. Pretty much put your pad in, put your, uh, your little rod on each side. About a quarter of the way through just so it sticks to the pad then you do your first clip you just put it through the little circle on one side then you just put the other pad in and then you push your pin through the other circle on that side of the clip you'll see which clip it is because one's bigger and one's smaller one just goes on each side so you put that little piece in there and then you just go ahead and push the pin through all the way then you got your small clip put on your other side do the same thing you put the rod through the little circle on uh, on both sides of the clips as far as the clips they got those two little spots on the front of each pad so you can obviously tell where those go because they only go in one spot so you just put them there if you guys need to stop the video or anything you can go ahead and do that too just so you do it right same thing for this side, you just push the pin through both sides of the little loop and then you just put the little pins inside the holes that they go into. Then your third clip is where it comes in play. Make sure you have your uh, your little holes for the thing, kind of like um, at 11 o'clock and uh, 1 o'clock. Then you just put the uh, end of the clip in each side. And then you got the little middle part, I just use a screwdriver just to put the, uh, the little middle hump of the clip into the uh, top part of the caliper. That's pretty much it. I had to look up a video how to do this because I didn't know how to do it, but pretty simple to put it on. And uh, that's pretty much all you need to do and you're ready to install. What's up guys, so car's in here. I was gonna do some uh, stop tests and everything for you guys at the end of the video, but it's just been raining for like fucking a week straight or two weeks, so I don't really have any time to drive when it's raining plus work. So I'm just gonna give you guys the rundown on the upgrade and if I think it's worth it. So do I think it's worth it? Yes, I do. Um, depending how much you get the calipers for, because um, that's where the, the most amount of money is. Um, I, like I said, I got mine from a, a local auto parts store, and then I just returned, uh, I just returned the core. I just turned that in, so I, I ended up paying like uh, I think it was a hundred dollars for both calipers, and then I just had the pads and then uh, the bracket. A few, uh, I don't know, like 30 minutes of modification with the little backing plate. So overall, I'll show you guys what I spent for everything. I do want to say since I drove the car. Got some stop test in. It's definitely a huge upgrade from the my calipers that I had before. I'm not sure it's because they were the pistons were a little bit rusty or whatever, but just overall, it's a lot more stopping power than uh, the M20 brakes. Even with the stock master cylinder, and I do need a master cylinder. It's a new one, so I would also upgrade to a um, E38 master cylinder if you're going to be doing this. Like I said, which I'm still going to do. So I might have a little episode upgrading that and then see if there's actually any difference. Which it should be because it's a bigger master cylinder, so it's going to push more fluid to the brakes. Um, I haven't had any problems with like the rears locking up when I uh, slam on the brakes or anything. So, like I said, it's definitely a lot, uh, a lot fucking better. Honestly, Let's see if you could see them in here. You kind of see them in there. 
so they definitely look good in there. Um, when I say to do, or if you're going to be doing this, you got to watch out for your offsets and everything. And um, I don't think I can use my bottle caps. So if you have bottle caps and you want to do the upgrade, you're going to have to at least get like 15s or 16s, and then you're going to have to worry about um, the difference in offset for the um, the caliper sticking out. So like I said, if you guys have spacers like I have, um, you have to get a machine shop to most likely ream the inside of the uh, the thing out so it goes deeper because of the uh, thing sitting back farther. So, But overall, I do think it was a worthwhile upgrade. It was definitely worth my money. And um, if you guys you know are looking for like a cheap upgrade for big brake calipers, this is a really popular one and it's pretty cheap. Like I said, it just depends on your caliper prices. Um, I did see them on eBay for like $65 or $70 um, a piece, but you know, you can check like Rock Auto or whatever. I just want to show you guys uh, what I paid for everything, and um, be sure to check out the video of the bag install. Um, I'll have a video of the trunk setup, um, and then I'll have a video for some other rare uh, parts I got for the E30. So that'll be uh, tight for you guys if you guys don't follow me on Instagram or anything. Overall, I do think it is a worthy upgrade, and uh, I'd definitely do it to another E30. My coupon plan I'll get next year, I'll probably do the same thing. Um, it's just cheaper than doing like a five uh, five lug swap and doing all that other stuff. So if you just have a stock four lug E30 and you don't really want to do all that stuff, definitely a good upgrade for you guys to do. And um, shout out to Garagistic for having all the parts and uh, shipping everything fast. So this last clip I'm going to show you, I'll show you guys... Uh, the prices, like I said, for everything. So, thanks for watching the video, guys, and uh, see you guys in the next video.